Don't bring it back. Go. Watch it. You got that music dropping away. What's wrong with that? Will the band please stop? Stop the music. Come on up now. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, may we have your attention? May we have your attention, please? We are happy to be here in this lovely city in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. I have known about Suffolk since I first went to Congress many years ago. I'm Congressman Hale Boggs from Louisiana. My privilege to introduce uh, some of your, it's my privilege to introduce to you uh, your distinguished officials of your state whom you know so well. But let me say first that this is the Lady Bird Special, named in honor of the great first lady of the United States of America. It's a democratic train and it's a happy train made up of people who have confidence in the United States and in its future under President Lyndon Bain Johnson. Now let me uh, present to you one of your famous sons, the Lieutenant Governor of the great uh, Commonwealth of Virginia, who in turn will present the Governor of Virginia and he in turn will present the face lady of our land. I present to you your own native son, the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Virginia, Lieutenant Gover Governor Godwin. Thank you, Congressman Boggs. Ladies and gentlemen, may we have your attention, please. May May we have your attention, please. This is a great day for Suffolk and the Tri-County area. We welcome all of you to the peanut capital of the world. We are particularly honored that this great train, with the First Lady of our land and her daughter aboard, and with many other prominent dignitaries, has found it possible to stop in our city today. This is a great democratic team and you are here today in support of this great effort. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce the dignitaries that have ridden aboard the Lady Bird Special from Petersburg to Suffolk today. The Honorable and Mrs. Shirley T. Holland The Honorable and Mrs. Major T. Benton. He is the mayor of Suffolk. <laughs> Mr. Theodore Myrick, Commissioner of Revenue of Suffolk. <laughs> Mr. William Wellington Jones, Commonwealth's Attorney of Nanceman County. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. John Henry Powell, Clerk of the Court. Mr. Robert E. Parker, Chairman of the Nanceman County Democratic Committee. 
Mr. Moody E. Stallings, Commonwealth Attorney of the City of Suffolk. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Forrest S. Womack of the Chamber of Commerce of Suffolk. <laughs> the Honorable William V. Rawlins and Mrs. Rawlins, here's our state senator. <laughs> Mrs. Laura H. L. Moore, Vice Chairman of the Democratic Committee of Suffolk. The Honorable and Mrs. Darden W. Jones, Mayor of the City of Franklin. Mr. Marshall Andrews of Suffolk. Honorable and Mrs. William P. Griffin, Chairman of the Democratic Committee of the City of Suffolk. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my happy privilege to present to this great audience, and I think that I can safely say it is the largest in the history of Suffolk, to present to you people Virginia's chief executive, the Honorable Albertus S. Harrison and Mrs. Harrison, Governor Ms. Harrison. My fellow Virginians, isn't it great to be a Virginian today and to be in Suffolk? And I hope that you will not miss the significance of the fact that we wanted to expose a very wonderful lady and her delightful daughter to the grace and the charm and the hospitality of Virginia. And we did that by bringing them through the 4th Congressional District beginning at Petersburg and ending at Suffolk. My friends, it is good to be with you. It is a wonderful occasion. Today we play host to a very grand person, and she will be introduced in just a minute. Thank you, Governor Harrison. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in the true Suffolk, Franklin, Nancy Mon, Isla White, and Southampton tradition, let's give a mighty roar of welcome to the first lady of our land, Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson. you everybody this is the most marvelous welcome to have sunshine and to have so, much, so many friends turning out to see us what could there possibly be to, to make us happier except maybe about five weeks later on <laughs> I've had a grand time coming through your beautiful state today in company with governor and mrs. Albertus Harrison and lieutenant governor and and mrs. Mills, Godwin, and every, every step of the way, your greatest booster, the Lieutenant Governor, has been telling me about Suffolk and about peanuts. <laughs> so, so, so I wasn't surprised when I began to see those signs that said, uh, Suffolk the peanut capital of the world, and thank you for all those nice signs out there for us. I don't think there's any secret why I am on this trip. I came here to talk about my husband and his record. My husband asked me to bring you his greetings. He would like to be here himself, but the massive job of the presidency doesn't stop day by day and it is what he must put first. So I am coming to visit some of the states that I know best, in many of which I spent summer times and vacation times of my childhood. Ten months ago, on a dreadful day that shook our country, my husband became your president. Since then, he has tried 
with all that is in him to keep our country on a steady course of economic prosperity, to face the world with firm strength, and to seek practical ways to help those Americans still in need. There are many things in which we can all take satisfaction. This is the 44th straight month in which our economy has remained strong. And the danger of those once frightening headlines about Panama and Guantanamo and Zanzibar has been reduced by tireless, patient effort. There are problems ahead, and he promises no easy solutions. But the President's years of working for the people of this country, 12 years in the House of Representatives, 12 in the Senate of the United States, three in the Vice Presidency, plus what a wife can only describe as a lot of determination, energy, and devotion to the job, these will all help to solve the problems that face our country. I'm proud of his record. I hope that you will want to continue it. And I thank you. I, I think that's the sign that says we must go. But first, I want you to meet our daughter, Linda Bird. I particularly want to thank all you young people for coming out here. I feel a special kinship to you because I'm a young person too. Young people have always been leaders and this year is not going to be any different. Your own Thomas Jefferson was only 33 when he helped write the when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. And now in the world, over half the people are under 25. In 15 years, over half the people of the United States will be under 25. So we all have our place in the sun, not only here today, but in the future. And I want to thank you particularly for all these wonderful signs. I noticed one or two over here for me and I'm particularly exuberant to see somebody cheering for me because mother gets all the lines. <laughs> and I'm glad that we live in a country where even a few people who may not like us can at least put up their signs too. Because in our heart, we know who's right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>